The neocons, neolibs, and mainstream media are all singing from the same song sheet, saying, we want war, we need more war. Now, Trump never gets media support unless he's threatening war or carrying out a military action. You see these beautiful pictures at night. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. They are beautiful pictures of fearsome armaments. Today, it's Venezuela. The president has been crystal clear. Military action is possible if that's what's required. But he needs to understand that a bullet to the forehead may be his way out of Venezuela. Sometimes one kick at the door and the whole rotten edifice falls down. Tomorrow, Iran. I am so pleased that President Trump is letting the Iranian president know there's a new sheriff in town. Who knows who will be next? It's no wonder that North Korea won't give up their nuclear weapons. Now, as commander in chief, I will end these counterproductive, wasteful regime change wars and work to end the new Cold War and nuclear arms race and use our precious resources to care for the needs of the American people. Quality health care, protecting our environment, improving education, rebuilding our infrastructure, and so much more. I humbly ask for your support. Sometimes, you know, there's a time to, there's a time to speak, and then there's a time to, time to listen. For me, right now, this is one of those times where I'm trying to listen. Uh, sometimes you just all you do is talk, and all you do is hear the sound of your own voice. But sometimes you just got to sit back and you got to listen to the voices of others making their uh, making their making their voices heard. Marcus Conti reporting today on a little bit of uh, what do we want war. Do we want perpetual war? Do we want do we want these counterinsurgency wars? We were warned about it a long time ago. Remember Eisenhower and the military industrial complex? We must not succumb to the military industrial complex. Remember that voice from from the uh, from the past he screamed out and told us that the the that that making war uh, a a uh, a business was bound to bite us in the ass. Well, it's biting us in the ass, you know. And um, or or Kennedy. I'll play a bunch of clips. There. I'm just gonna play like video. <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, the video, the video player guy, whatever. Video DJ Marcus Conte reporting. So I mean, what do we want? We want Medicare for all. We wanna we want a uh, you know we could talk about the let's the problems you know debt uh, student debt people you know have all this crazy student debt and uh, college make college tuition free at city and state universities uh, squash the student debt get those kids out of debt get me out of debt I'm still in debt I still get fucking I still owe I don't know how many oh I threw that shit in the garbage man I went to school right and I took that I took that loan shit you know what I'm saying I took it. I took that book and the time they used to give you the book where where you'd have to you you peel off one coupon and send your check and pay that shit. I took that shit, I took the whole book, I threw it in the fucking garbage, man. I threw it in the garbage on the way out of school, right? That's just like re- my rebellious nature. But nonetheless, it's just student loan should be <laughs> student Student debt should be squashed, I guess, you know, after 35 years in my, in my case, right? Or, um, you know, climate change, living wage, criminal justice reform, immigration reform, get money out of politics, uh, break up big pharma, big oil, military industrial complex, right? These are the problems that are, are, plaguing, are plaguing us right now. We're, we're most, most importantly, we're... Where as Tulsi Gabbard, I love Tulsi Gabbard. I, I'm no, I'm no. Uh, I just, I mean, Tulsi Gabbard is going to be the equivalent of the, um, you know, uh, uh, Jill Stein Green Party, where she's not getting. It's obvious that Jill, that Tulsi Gabbard is, is gaining more than one percent of the vote nationally, but that's all they're going to give her in the in terms of the statistics, right? That's why her best bet is to is to elevate Bernie Sanders and then lobby for a position with Bernie Sanders, Secretary of State, Vice President. Oh, what a great, what a great run, right? Now, again, I'm not, I'm not, I know people think, listen, you could say to yourself, nothing matters, everything is fake, or 
everything matters and everything is real. I mean, it's your choice. You know, you could put your head in the sand and say, oh, no, no, politics are, are washed. There's no hope for America anymore. The neocons and the corporations have, have, have taxed us out and, and we're all going to be slaves to the bitter end. Mm. I, I fundamentally disagree with that. I think that, that the, there is a tipping point where <clears throat> people awaken and change happens very, very quickly. I, I think we could be, we could be at that point. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, there is signs. There is signs out there of revolution, but it's divided revolution. One, one, one revolution says that you know the neocon Trumpism is the way to go, and the others are saying it's it's uh, you know it's a it's a crash course, right? It's a crash course. So. Uh, Let's listen to let's listen to Eisenhower. Remember Eisenhower, the military industrial complex. I just want to talk about war versus peace today. Is is Eisenhower? Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments industry. American makers of plowshares could, with time and as required, make swords as well. But we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Added to this, three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. Hmm. It's like a ghost from the past telling us the truth, right? A ghost screams out in truth. Uh, we, we already know this stuff, right? We, we knew it all along. And here's, here's the modern-day version, Tulsi Gabbard, telling us the same thing, right? Uh, Eisenhower was a, was a military guy, was a general, Tulsi Gabbard, a uh, a Iraqi war veteran, uh, it's certainly not a general or or a high high brass, but definitely a foot soldier who saw the misery of war. And and there's a congresswoman shouting out against the military industrial complex. So that's that's Eisenhower, and um, I mean just stroll down memory lane. But what do we have today, right? Is is any of it was any of it. Uh, instituted or remembered no it's all forgotten right eisenhower told us in 1961 and then right after that kennedy came along and told us uh again you know again the same uh, the same toot and the same horn right so so here's pence right modern day modern day military industrial complex this is three days ago uh told graduates at west point the military school it was a certainty that they will, quote, be on, be on a battlefield for America and will move to the sound of guns. That's where we are, right? Pence did not say for whose agenda they would be fighting, whether it would be the oil company's agenda or Israel or the New York banks or for the neo, neoconservative ideology of U.S. world dominance, or for the CIA's drug business. Indeed, the West Point graduates will die without ever knowing whose interest they are fighting. 
Here's another article. U.S. Uh, forces blow up three oil tankers in Syria, enforcing oil embargo. So we're using U.S. forces to interfere in Syria's trade for oil. Right? So if someone dies in that battle, you're dying for the oil trade. You're not dying for freedom or democracy or any of those things. Uh, it's so obvious, really, you know. When you get down to it, but that's that's that was four days ago, right? a day before Pence said that the troops will move to the sound of bullets. Uh, what else? So, oh, here's here's more. Let's let's look at more. I'll give you the solution. There is a solution. We're going to give five minutes of solution. Uh, so here's Kennedy. This is this is John F. Kennedy, who came into office after. Eisenhower. This is, this is a brilliant speech, too. Check this out. There are few earthly things more beautiful than a university, wrote John Macefield in his tribute to English universities, and his words are equally true today. He did not refer to towers or to campuses. He admired the splendid beauty of a university because it was, he said, a place where those who hate ignorance may strive to know where those who perceive truth may strive to make others see. I have therefore chosen this time and place to discuss a topic on which ignorance too often abounds and the truth too rarely perceived. And that is the most important topic on earth, peace. What kind of a peace do I mean and what kind of a peace do we seek? Not a Pax Americana enforced on the world by American weapons of war, not the peace of the grave or the security of the slave. I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, the, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and to hope and build a better life for their children, not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women, not merely peace in our time, but peace in all time. I speak of peace because of the new face of war. Total war makes no sense in an age where great powers can maintain large and relatively invulnerable nuclear forces and refuse to surrender without resort to those forces. It makes no sense in an age where a single nuclear weapon contains almost 10 times the explosive force delivered by all the Allied Air Forces in the Second World War. It makes no sense in an age when the deadly poisons produced by a nuclear exchange would be carried by wind and water and soil and seed to the far corners of the globe and a generations yet unborn. Today, the expenditure of billions of dollars every year on weapons acquired for the purpose of making sure we never need them is essential to the keeping of peace. But surely the acquisition of such idle stockpiles, which can only destroy and never create, is not the only, much less the most efficient, means of assuring peace. I speak of peace, therefore, as the necessary rational end of rational men. I realize the pursuit of peace is not as dramatic as the pursuit of war, and frequently the words of the pursuers fall on deaf ears, but we have no more urgent task. Wow, powerful, right? It's so powerful, John F. Kennedy, right? It's nothing... Nothing I want to really add to that one, but uh, you know, he talked. He had all the points, right? We're, we're a great people. We're a great nation. A great, a nation of people who were clearly awake in the early '60s, right? Kennedy saw it, and then you know what happened? He took a bullet, right? He took a bullet. Not even a few years later, a year later, right? So, so is there a solution? What is the solution? What is the solution? We have a. Do we have anybody who's saying any of these things besides Tulsi Garrett? Someone who could maybe, 
I don't know, win the presidency and guide the country in that direction? I think we do. So five minutes of bliss, right? And here he is, right? We know it. We know it to be true. No, I know everybody. You could just, just for a minute. I know it's so hard. It's so hard to overlook people's defects of character, right? Bernie Sanders fell f- hook, line, and sinker for Russia, Russia, Russia. I know. People think that he took the money from Hillary Clinton. I know, I know, I know. He took the money. He let Hillary Clinton, you know, pack his ass, right? and and so on and so forth, right? And uh, he took, oh, he bought a summer home. He took the money and ran. He got paid off. He's a shill. He's a Jew. He's a she. Shut the house. So, so do we have any hope? If if you take this guy, and you put him and you pair him with with Tulsi Gabbard, wow, what a team! Let's listen. He hits all the points. Five minutes of bliss. Well, let me uh, thank Move On for inviting me to be here with you today. All of you know there are many enormously important issues, including the need for Medicare for all, for giving student debt and making public colleges and universities tuition free, raising the minimum wage, criminal justice reform, immigration reform, and addressing the global crisis of climate change. Among other issues. But there is one issue out there that does not get the attention that it deserves a very big idea, and that is the need to stop endless wars and to bring to bring the world together to find diplomatic solutions to international conflict. Today, we are preparing to send soldiers to Afghanistan who were not even born on September 11, 2001. We have spent $5 trillion on the wars that have taken place since, not just in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen, a horrific war. And now we have some of the same people that got us into the war in Iraq trying to start a military conflict with Iran. We have got to stop endless wars. We have got to cut military spending. Now recently, Recently, I have been attacked because of my opposition to unnecessary wars. I make no apologies as a young man for opposing the war in Vietnam. I make no apologies as a congressman for doing everything that I could to prevent the disastrous war in Iraq. And I am proud right now to have led the effort to get the United States out of an unauthorized, unconstitutional war in Yemen. And let me be absolutely clear, with the Trump administration proposing to send 10,000 troops to confront Iran, I will do everything in my power to stop a war with Iran. It is time to bring our troops home from Afghanistan and Iraq. It is time for Congress to assert its constitutional prerogative and repeal the 2001 and 2002 authorizations that have been used as a blank check to send U.S. troops into harm's way. But it is not enough to just end military interventions. It is time to end the entire policy of endless wars. Using war and militarism as the first and only foreign policy tool has undermined the United States' moral authority, caused allies to question our ability to lead, drained our treasury, and corroded our own democracy. When we end endless wars, we can finally begin to ask ourselves, 
How do we move toward a global community in which people have decent jobs, adequate food, clean water, education, health care, and the housing that they need? How can we band together as a planet and end the absurdity of the rich and multinational corporations stashing over $21 trillion in offshore bank accounts to avoid paying their fair share of taxes in the United States and around the world? And obviously, how can we bring countries all over the world together dealing with the existential threat not only to our country but the world of climate change. No one country can solve climate change alone. This is a crisis that calls for international cooperation if we are to leave our children and grandchildren a planet that is healthy and habitable. And here is my dream. You want a big idea? Here is a very big idea that maybe, just maybe, countries around the world today that are spending a trillion and a half dollars on weapons of destruction to kill each other, maybe we can band together and use that money to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energy and energy efficiency and save the planet and in the process create millions of good paying jobs. That is my big idea. <laughs> That's Bernie knocking his skin off the ball, man. Damn, look, he didn't hold back there. Didn't hold back there. It's some total. It's a sum total of all the shit we were just talking about, right? So five minutes of bliss, right? And, and, and there you have it, right? So what do you choose? You know, do you choose the, the current path of, you know, blowing up, blowing up ships in Syria and blowing, you know, blowing up oil tankers, blaming the, blaming other people for your, for your mishap? Do you, do you, you know, do you, do you create pseudo, pseudo events in Venezuela and then accuse the, the president of being a dictator and a tyrant and a, uh, the troikia of tyranny and all that shit. Do you, you know, pretend that there's weapons of mass destruction and then invade a sovereign nation over over nothing? Uh, is that what is that what we want? Do you do you does Congress give you a bill, Trump? To, does Congress give you a bill to end the war in Yemen and then you veto the bill and continue the war funding funding ISIS and Al Qaeda in Yemen? And and Saudi Arabia funding funding ISIS and Al Qaeda in Yemen, starting a war with Iran, supporting Israel's occupation of Palestine. Right. Is that where we are today? Or you can have this message of uh, of peace, a message of peace, to end the endless wars, to cut the military industrial spending. I say eighty percent. I'll I'll take fifty percent. Uh, and and put that money into you know other things green new deal healthcare for all uh, build the country from the bottom up from the inside not from the outside in from the inside out marcus conti reporting kindly become a patreon of this channel we're growing we're growing despite what youtube says we're still growing there's a lot of people don't pay, pay attention to the numbers don't get wound up by the numbers this is, you know, it's a shadow ban, demonetized shadow ban, but we're, you know, self-supporting, self-supporting, a people-funded, you know, people-funded idea. Can it work? Yeah, I think it can work. Just become a Patreon just for a dollar or two and we'll make it happen, you know what I'm saying? And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe because YouTube likes to unsubscribe you so you can't hear this. Marcus Conte reporting.